Hi, this is Ibarian X from The Candid Frame. In one of the previous videos, I talked about cliches in street photography, and these are sort of motifs that we commonly return to over and over and over again. And even though I kind of poo-pooed cliches a little bit, I think that they can be a, a good thing as long as you are aware of them and try to take them to another level. And one of the very common motifs in street photography is finding an interesting background like a storefront or a mural and waiting for somebody to walk in front of it and create an interesting image. So I chose three images to illustrate different ideas that you can think about the next time you come upon a, a scene just like that and want to elevate your photograph to another level. Okay, here we have a shot by Will Z 21 to 55. This was shot with a Leica M and it was shot at 1 60th of a second, at F4, ISO 800. So this is the kind of scene I'm talking about. Uh, in this case, it's a closed storefront, and we have this graffiti on the windows and the doors, and we have some stickers on the wall uh, to the left. It's a very graphic image, not just only because of the graffiti, but because of the text. And we also have this repetition of shape. Uh, in terms of the rectangles that pervade the entire image. So it's a very graphic image, especially with the conversion over to black and white. But to complete the image, the photographer here waited for someone to come into the frame to serve as a, a counterpoint or a point of contrast to the subject. And in this case, it's this woman uh, who is protecting herself uh, from the rain with the umbrella and the heavy coat, and it looks like a pair of earmuffs over her ears. Now, when you're photographing a scene like this, you are really dependent on the subject. You're usually waiting for just the right subject. It's either something about the way that they're dressed, something about their, their body, um, something maybe in terms of what they're doing, if they're running through the scene or they're carrying something. For a scene like that, for an image like that to work, it's really dependent on complete chance, waiting for the right subject to come into the frame. And when that subject comes into the frame, you want to get them in a good position. And this splay of the legs is sort of the ideal thing that you want to pursue when you are photographing someone walking in front of a scene. You want to get that, that separation of the legs because it creates this wonderful sort of triangle, but adds a bit of energy and motion or sense of motion to the image. If you get the person with their legs in a, in a position where they're uh, one right behind the other, they appear too static. And since the rest of the frame is already static, you really want to get that sense of movement. So it's an issue about being able to time it so you get them so their legs are positioned just like this and get them positioned relatively uh, somewhere in the frame that provides some balance here. The person is just off-center from the middle, which I think works for this particular shot. Now, the burden of, of, of waiting for the right person, though, is that you're always trying to wait for the right sort of character. You're always waiting for, you know, the person that will help complete the image. It's not just anybody that can come and fill up the, can fill the scene and complete it. And if you've waited for any period of time, you'll see dozens and dozens of people probably walk in front of your camera and not all of them sort of fit the bill. And you're really waiting for just the right person. And I, I do this myself all the time. You know, I see a scene uh, and I just wait. But that's one of the one of the sort of the problems of shooting like this is that you are completely dependent on the right person. Because without that right person, there's not little to nothing else that is really going to carry the image. Because if you don't have a person in this particular shot, it's really just sort of a still life of a street scene. There's nothing, you know, beyond whatever interest the graffiti may have for, for the viewer to make this sort of an interesting shot to make you want to linger on the photograph. So while I'm not trying to dissuade you from making these kind of photographs, you have to realize that maybe there are some other things that you can look for to try and elevate the quality of the photograph and not be so dependent on having the right person walk into the frame. Here we have a shot by Okaha. Uh, this was shot with a Fuji X-T1 at 1 1,000th of a second at f7.1 ISO 200. So 
Here we have another uh, street scene. We have basically this wall with this crack. There's a little bit of graffiti on it. There are these posts that uh, go up and down the street. And again, um, the photographer here is waiting for a subject to walk down the sidewalk in order to complete the scene. Now, here the photographer makes a, a different choice because rather than positioning the camera so that it's parallel with whatever wall or, or uh, in this case, the wall, he's shooting at an angle in order to create these sort of diagonal lines that pervade the shot. You can see it, this, this curb line that moves here. It's also created by the shadow and the light here. And um, you get this flow, this energy of things moving downhill and that's sort of reinforced by this fellow here who is walking down the scene so your eye naturally flows from the top of the hill here all the way down here and sort of culminates in this figure here before he moves through the uh, through, through the frame and that's another choice that you can make the ability to shoot not parallel to whatever wall or storefront you're trying to shoot at an angle. In this case, he's in a street where there may or may not have been a lot of vehicle traffic, which allowed him to step out into the street. You're not going to be able to do this in New York City unless it's like the middle of the night, and even then it'd probably, probably be a little bit precarious. But here, the choice to shoot at an angle really allows the scene to produce its own sense of dynamism. There's an energy as a result of being able to shoot and create these these diagonal lines that pervade the entire frame. And that's an important choice for the shot because when you're shooting parallel to the scene and and everything is sort of parallel to the, the position of the camera, everything is very static. And the only thing that is going to add any energy or any motion is going to be the character that walks into the frame. Now, you do have the character here that's walking into the frame, and his legs are sort of positioned as if they're, the knee is about to come up to take a step. So he's not uh, conveying the dynamic sense of motion that the previous shot uh, did, but you still get a sense of his movement, this sort of potentiality of movement that he's about to take that next step. But that's happening. But what's really interesting about his position uh, in this frame is the contrast that his body, the darkness of his body against that light wall creates. Uh, he's walking like into or out of the light and into shadow. So we only have this bit of light that's hitting sort of the edge of his face and the rest of his body is relegated to shadow, which creates this really incredible contrast to the wall, which is repeated by these posts that go from the right all the way up to the left. So his body is sort of mimicking that that sort of rectangular, narrow rectangular shape that those posts are creating, which are also mimicked by these windows here up in the left-hand corner and even the uh, rectangle here. There's a repetition of uh, rectangles. And his body, even though it's not ramrod straight, uh, is sort of implying some of that 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 rectangular shape that we're seeing throughout the entire frame. So it's not just about, you know, the right person walking into the scene and having a good body position. It's about the light and the contrast. It's about the pattern that exists within the frame and making choices to build on those elements. Because if you look at this shot without the person in it, you can sense that the potentiality of the entire frame you can just feel it and this is the kind of shot where you go yeah i need that person in order to complete it but it's almost like 90 percent there you know with the scene before it's an interesting scene but i don't know whether it would hold my attention as much as this would and one of the challenges as street photographers is to walk the streets and find scenes like this that you know, that really are sort of speaking to your eye, that are telling you, wow, this scene really has some potential if I frame it correctly, and then just wait for the right subject to be the sort of the flourish or the accent. Um, the character walking into the scene is still important, but I hope that you're getting a, a sense that by paying attention to light, by paying attention to shadow, by paying attention to sort of the graphic nature of the shot and the choices that, that can lead you to make, 
you're increasing your chances of making a really much more dynamic and interesting photograph. Here we have a shot by Marco Scuderi. This was shot with a Sony uh, RX100, and this was shot at 1 2,000th of a second, F10, ISO 800. So here's one of the other choices that you can make when you come up uh, to a wall or storefront, and it's about using light and shadow, especially using sil silhouette. Um, in this case, the setting here is that is the wall and the building and the architecture. So in and of itself, that light and shadow play a big part in the feel of this image. Uh, you get these great triangles here and here and here that pervade the entire shot. The lighting itself provide a real graphic sense to the image that really make it work. Uh, the graffiti, again, we have three images with graffiti, is sort of a, a little telling element to the shot, but it isn't the core of the shot. It's not really what we're focusing on. It's just a small, small accent. And again, we're waiting for someone to help complete the shot. But in this case, you know, the photographer is not trying to get the figure in full detail. He's not using the light to illuminate and reveal the subject. He really just wants to use the subject in silhouette as another graphic element in the shot. Because this shot is about graphics. It's about shapes. Uh, it is about a sense of place, but this shot is so much about line and shape and form. And that figure serves as a point of, as a counterpoint, as a sense, provides a sense of scale. Uh, it really is a wonderful, wonderful shot. And it's it speaks to being able to see a scene and to sort of really sense the potential. And it's something that if you take a look at a lot of photographs and you come upon the scenes in real life, you get to sort of learn how to see these things and recognize them so that you're not just simply walking down the street hoping that an interesting character pops in front of your lens so that you can make a photograph. Because one of the things that you've probably seen in your own photographs and a lot of other people's photographs is that they make pictures of interesting characters, but the rest of the shot just falls apart. There's just nothing there. They're not paying attention to the lighting. They're not paying attention to the background. They're not paying attention to the shadow. So there's a bunch of busyness and there's just a lot of stuff that is not serving the subject or the, or the photograph. And this way of seeing, where you're paying attention to your setting and to light and to shadow and trying to sort of meld them together into a complete whole, that's where the magic happens. And it really, it really demands that you pay attention to a level that you're probably not accustomed to if you've just been shooting street photography for a while. Or even if you have, uh, if you've, like me, have had moments where you're frustrated with the idea that you're repeating the same pictures over and over again, this is probably along the lines of how you have to think. This is just one example of one type of cliche uh, in street photography that we encounter. But I'm hoping that it provides some solutions or, or some alternatives for how you can meet that challenge and surmount them. Okay, I hope that was helpful. If you've never heard of The Candid Frame, The Candid Frame is a podcast which features conversations with some of the world's best photographers. Uh, we interview photographers from every genre of photography, not just street photography. Uh, I recently interviewed uh, Benjamin Von Wong, who if you... Uh, check out a lot of videos on YouTube. You've probably seen a lot of his YouTube videos. He's a really interesting uh, photographer. Uh, he's worked in a variety of different mediums, and he does some really inventive photography that is coming from a real sort of personal concern for the uh, for the environment and and wanting to make a difference. So if, uh, if you have a mind to, check it out. And uh, you can go to The Candid Frame and listen to it there. Or you can listen to it on iTunes. Or better yet, we have an app available for Windows, Android, and uh, Apple iOS. And it's completely free, which will allow you to access all 368 interviews that we've conducted over the past uh, 10, 10 years. And if you want to contribute to The Candid Frame uh, Flickr group, just go to The Candid Frame, ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do so. Thanks for uh, joining us, and if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.